guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm demonstrating card number four from my Irresistible Blooms card class that has six cards in total. And the technique that I'm using today is one I've been enjoying for years. It incorporates heat embossing with our reinkers and water and the results are beautiful. I can't wait to share this with you, so let's start stamping. For this technique, I'm using the watercolor paper from Stampin' Up. Now I have used our regular basic white card stock tons and tons of times with this technique and it works really well but if you want ultimate amazing results I really recommend our beautiful water watercolor cardstock so I already have my bits and pieces pre-cut and of course this is from my um, these cards are all part of my customer appreciation card class so anyone who places an order with me this month will receive these pre-cut bits and pieces to make their cards let me move my coffee out of the way so I don't spill it. It is still morning here <laughs> in beautiful Nova Scotia and it is cold and nothing beats a hot cup of fresh coffee when you're stamping. I just pulled in the card by the way that um, was my original card. This is what we're making but I'm going to use different colors. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. Okay and I'm going to bring in my watercolor cardstock now and I don't have my paper with the um, Measurement. So let's take a quick look here. This is four and three quarters by three and a quarter. Right. I am going to cover this with my embossing buddy because we are going to do some heat embossing. So let me bring in the beautiful Irresistible Blooms stamp set. I am really loving this stamp set, and I have a lot of, um, you know, of our other stamp sets that have floral images but you know what there's just something special about this stamp set that's just I don't know it's really it's just so fun to work with and I'm just really 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 loving it all right let's stick that on a block and I'm gonna bring in my first mark ink pad and I am going to emboss this in gold so I'm gonna put that down here and I'm going to emboss as I go so that I can see where my images are. I hope you guys have been enjoying this card series. I've been seeing your comments and I haven't responded yet, my apologies. Um, but I am really uh, enjoying making these cards for you. Really, really having a lot of fun and I appreciate your comments where some of you have been saying oh I really like the the shorter videos versus you know one long video with all four or five or six cards so uh, I will continue doing my uh, card class videos like this I'm gonna bring in some I'm gonna bring in my placemat here because I'm gonna be stamping off now and I don't want to get it onto my desk do the smaller flower. I saw a friend had posted on Facebook today that it's, I think she said 14 days until spring. And my goodness, if you guys know me, then you know how much I love working in my flower beds and my garden. <laughs> so when I saw that, I was like, yay. Quite often we will still have snow in April and May and definitely we still have frost in uh, in June in fact I always wait to plant my garden I'll start my seeds inside but I'll wait and start putting things in the garden after the last full moon of June I had uh, a dear old timer had said that to me once and he was right we always had a frost uh, up until the last full moon of June but I'm thinking I'm gonna start my seeds earlier this year and we are expanding our garden so oh my gosh I just can't wait this has felt like a very long winter and I need to get outside and get some exercise get some more fresh air so you can see I'm just filling in with the leaves here there and everywhere Let's Okie doke. Now I'm gonna sap that with my heat tool, except I see I got some powder right here where I don't want it, so just brush that off. 
And heat embossing does take a little bit longer when you're working with a heavier cardstock like this. So you can take your heat tool and warm it up underneath first and then go on the front. Doesn't that look pretty? So you want to make sure it's all embossed and that there's no powder. Now I can tell right here that I didn't get enough powder on that. It's not raised. It's not, you know, as good as it could be, that's for sure. But it's still going to work and there's no powder that hasn't been melted. So when you're embossing, um, turn your paper a little bit and make sure that there's no powder that um, hasn't been melted. Okay, I am bringing in a clear block and some reinkers, and these are the colors that I used on the first card. And I'm not necessarily going to use them all on this card, and you certainly don't need to use tons. But I did want to have some different colors onto my card. So I have Fresh Freesia, I have Starry Sky. Uh, we don't need that. That's for the next card that I'll be sharing in this series. That's the white reinker. Uh, polished pink, granny apple green, pool party, daffodil delight, Tahitian tide, and evening evergreen. All right, so I'm going to start by um, kind of making a palette. I'm going to start by squeezing some of my daffodil delight onto that block and some of my polished pink and I'm keeping them a little bit away from each other because I will be adding some water and I don't want them to get all muddy we'll put some fresh freeze out here you can use one of those um, little paint trays that have the little dips and grooves in them all right so I have a starry sky my fresh freeze polished pink and my daffodil delight so let me get all my pieces of the way. I have a piece of paper towel handy. Alright, I have my water painter and I'm just squeezing it out on my hand to make sure water is coming out. And I'm going to start with um, this flower first. And what I'm going to do is I'm just squeezing the barrel of my water painter to get quite a bit of water inside the flower. Where the embossing lines are, it's going to kind of hold the water and the color inside of it. So you want to be generous. You want to really see um, lots of water inside your flower. Now I'm going to pick up my Daffodil Delight and I'm just going to tap it and it's going to flow. Whoops, not enough water there. Squeeze out some more water. But when you tap it, that ink is just going to flow where that water is. So if you need to squeeze your barrel as you're tapping your ink down, you can do that. Okay, and then you can also kind of move it around as you want. Now I'm just going back and forth on my paper towel. I'm going to pick up some of this polished pink and I've added some water so I'm spreading that ink around a bit and I'm going to drop it whoops see how it just flows right in so I'm just tapping it down and it's just flowing right in where that water is sitting on the cardstock pick some more up okay and I'm just going to pull some of that water into the white areas where I'm missing some. Get a bit more water here. You won't believe how beautiful that is when it dries. So I'm going to carefully move this around and work on the second flower. Again, adding lots of water, and I know there's still some yellow um, on my water brush but that's all right because I'm going to be going in with the purples which is going to be darker so really squeezing getting that water out so I have a lot of water I'm going to go in with my fresh Frisa and just start dropping some of the ink down and I just love watching how it flows into that water Now I'm going to go into the starry sky 
and start dropping that down. And I'm being a little extra careful this time because I don't want to lose all that fresh freeze out that I just put on, but I do want the colors to flow together. So keep squeezing your barrel if you need to, to get that water in there. Get some blue over here. Oh my gosh, this one's gonna be so pretty when it dries. Okay. Again, a little bit of white areas. Move that ink around the water. Now, I do want some more of that fresh breeze over here, so I'm gonna take the tip of my paper towel and soak up some of that water. Pick up some fresh frisa and dab it down, okay? Maybe I'll add a little bit more here. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of the water in that section, add a little bit more of the fresh frisa. Okay, you don't want to muck around with it too much because you don't want it to uh, go all muddy. I can see some white areas I've missed though. Just pull that ink in. Next flower. Got some water here where I don't want it because I don't want my ink overflowing. Whoops, and I just splattered some water down. That's all right. Card making is so much more enjoyable when you don't sweat the small stuff and when you're not aiming for perfection. You just want to create and have fun and enjoy the process, right? All right. I think for this one, I'm going to use some polished pink and some fresh Frisa. Isn't that pretty? You could even just use the one color because you're going to have the different shades and variations of that color. So now I'm going into my fresh Frieza. I'm squeezing my barrel to get some more water and tap it down. You really want to make sure you have lots of water onto your card base. I'm literally just tapping it down. Okay. I dare say that's good. I'm going to move some of this around in here. Now, you'll notice too, I'm not using the heat tool because I don't want to move all that water and ink around. As it starts drying, it is so beautiful to have those colors. So this is one of those things that it's good to, to do and then set it aside, let it dry on its own. All right, time for the leaves. I can see I got some water already on this one. So I'm just gonna add some more water and I'm gonna pick up, oh, we don't have any green on here, so. I'm gonna add some granny apple green. Just put it right here. And some evening evergreen, which of course are colors of the card stalks I'm using today. So that's going to tie everything in together. I'm just gonna tap it down. And I'm not worrying about covering the whole piece because I'm gonna go back in and add my evening evergreen. Just a little, just a little dot. And then move that granny apple a little bit to get all the white bits. I'm gonna take some granny apple and just put some into this gold so it can go in between the gold embossing. And the embossing again is going to resist the ink. So I can just wipe off any excess as I need to. So I'm going to spin that around, do the same thing here, add some water, add some water on top of this too. 
pick up my granny apple green and drop it down drop it down and just a little touch of that evening evergreen okay All right, so I'm gonna let that set and fully dry. Again, I don't wanna use my heat tool and move all that ink around. Uh, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can really see the different colors in each one of these flowers, and they are beautiful. And even the two greens and the leaves, oh my gosh, they're gonna look so nice when they are all dry. So I will come back when these are dry and show you the next step. Here's what it looks like all dry. And look at those beautiful colors. You can see all the different shades and the flowers. So pretty. I love this one. But they're all so, so pretty. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'm going to add actually some of the splatters from this stamp set. Just a few because there's actually not a whole lot of room. But I do love the splatters. Now I could go ahead and use this just like it is on my card, uh, but I do like adding some blue. So this is where I'm going to add some of my Tahitian Tide. Whoops, that's more than what I needed. Um, so I'm just going to take my, my brush and I'm gonna work in sections and I'm just going in between the embossed images putting on some water to wet the cardstock and I'm gonna pick up some of that Tahitian Tide. I am squeezing the barrel to add water to that ink and I'm just going to fill in the areas. And I'm adding water, squeezing as I go into the other uh, sections that need the ink. I'm just going to pick up some color and just kind of drop it here and there just to add some darker shades of blue. I'm going to add a little bit of pool party and see what happens. Pick that up because the pool party has some greens in it, which is really pretty. Okay, I am going to heat set this now because I don't have as much color pooled on the flowers like I did earlier, but I do want to dry that layer of blue before I move on to the next step. So there are some really pretty different shades going on in this background. So before I put my water painter away, I want to splatter some water on this, so I'm just going to squeeze and tap and I like to turn my card around okay I'm gonna set that with my heat tool again there is my beautiful piece ready to go on to my card front I love it it looks so pretty I really don't think Looking through the camera as I'm filming and in real life, I don't think the camera is really doing justice to the, the colors and just how really pretty this is. Now it's time to put the card together. So I have my Granny Apple card base. This measures 11 by four and a quarter, scored at the five and a half mark. And Evening Evergreen, and this is cut at four by five and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take a strip of tear and tape and put it down near the bottom edge and I'm going to wrap a strip of pool party ribbon right across on that tear and tape and since I have the tear and tape out I'm just going to use that 
to adhere this to my card base. And this piece is going to go on just like so. And I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to put that on. For the sentiment, I'm taking a scrap piece of the designer series paper that coordinates with this um, beautiful irresistible blooms and I'm going to stamp I like you because who does not want to get a card that says I like you <laughs> like that's just gonna make somebody really happy and I'm gonna stamp that in my evening evergreen okay I'm just trimming my sentiment so now that I've got that cut I'm going to um, cut some Stampin' Dimensionals in half and put them behind this. And I've decided I'm going to put this portrait. I was going to do it landscape, and then I changed my mind. I'm going to do a portrait. And I'm going to put this sentiment right about here and for this card I'm just making a simple knot instead of a bow and I've got a piece of tear and tape I'm just gonna put it right there and lastly I am going to add a gem to the center of each flower so in my other videos with these cards using the gems, I used liquid glue um, and now I'm just going to use our fine tip glue pen. So I'm going to get a yellow one for that one, blue, whoops, blue one for this and pink for the other one. There's my completed card. Here's my original card. Now you can see the differences uh, using the same reinkers, but you get different looks every time depending on how you use them. So first of all, I embossed this one in copper instead of gold embossing powder. And I have more colors in each flower too. So you can see I have a real variety of the colors. I have the pink and the yellow and the purple. Here I have just the polished pink and the yellow. And then here I've got the polished pink and with the purples. And I used more of the pool party on the background instead of the Tahitian Tide. I stamped the sentiment from the same stamp set, but I just used the My Friend portion and embossed it with white on uh, Evening Evergreen, cut it out and glued it on. And then the ribbon is wrapped right around the watercolor cardstock versus here where I wrapped it around the Evening Evergreen and added a knot instead of a bow. I hope you enjoyed today's cards. If you love watercoloring as much as I do, this technique is definitely for you. It is so incredibly relaxing, so rewarding when you're seeing those inks flow into each other just so beautifully. And this is just such a fun way to use this stamp set. So you can try it with white embossing powder. You can even try it with the clear embossing powder. And of course, silver or black, it's all going to look really, really pretty. So here's a sneak peek of the next card I'm going to be sharing in this month's class. And there is heat embossing, but it's a different technique and it's not using um, these colored um, reinkers. It's using a white ink. So really, really fun, fun technique that I will share with you in my next video. And until then, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you. Take care and happy stamping.